California, stay away from here. Stay away from here now. Don't, don't, don't come in here. Whatever you hear, stay away. John Doe has the upper hand. What's in the box? Greetings, 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 everyone. Steve, Paracords of Kindness. How you doing today? Hopefully your weaving's been happy. Okay, welcome to another edition of What's in the Box? Don't look in the box, man. What's in the box? Okay, but as always, before we get to the box, let me talk at you. Okay, let's see. First off, because of a tutorial or a bracelet that I made and I shared it quite a few places on social media, I was overwhelmed with a request for a tutorial. I made it, and because of that, I had quite a few new subscribers. So for all the new subscribers, thank you. I appreciate it. I really do. Um. Okay, now, with that said, Next thing, uh, don't really have, well, I guess I a shameless plug. My channel, I do a shameless plug. Right here. This this is going to go into with what I'm going to mention here in a little while. Um, has to do with some of the colors I got, too. This is a fishtail belly or a belly fishtail. I just not label it for short, a fish belly with the cobra inlay. Right? Olive drab, maroon, and gold. Put it on silicone buckle. Very, uh, it's complicated, so the video obviously is going to be long. My videos are long anyway, but this one is long, and I've got two videos for it. Okay, this one right here is an anaconda, and I've stitched it. And here I'll zoom in, show you the colors. It's all about colors. My channel is all about some colors. I'll get to that in a second. But this one is the exposed core strand running up and down it is blackish gray. The main body is maroon, and the cross pieces right here are charcoal gray, and the little bit of stitch pieces is smoke gray. And it's also on a silicone buckle. This one being black, this one being maroon. Okay, now, with that said, uh, let's see, I got a couple of tips I'm going to throw out there, so stick around just just stick with me. Like I tell people, for the new people, if you don't know this, and for the people who, you know, watch these videos on a regular basis, um, I'll often just throw out little tips and tricks and things like that. Stuff I've picked up, stuff I've learned, I'll mention this or I'll mention that. You can always learn something just by watching the videos. And if for those who don't have the time, they don't want to sit here, they don't have the attention span or whatever, YouTube does have a setting. Go down there to the gear icon, gear icon, and you click it, and it says playback speed. You put it on twice the speed. It'll play play the video twice as fast. Now, I can do that on my phone, and I have an iPhone. I'm sure the YouTube app on Android is the same way, but I know on the desktop you can do it because I watch most of the videos from YouTube to sped up. Okay, let's see. Now, uh, I kind of give you the, the intent of why I started doing these. Um, first off, I'll show I'll show the work, some of the stuff I've done since I made the last video, which is usually a week ago, right? I'll show you some of the stuff I've done. And as always, some of it's already been made and mailed out or delivered to customers, so I can't show those. But if I have the same weave in different colors, I'll show that. I'll show that. Okay, now, here's the the technical nugget of why I do this. Hopefully, you will understand what I'm trying to explain to people. I've said this in the past. Quite a few of my videos, I mentioned this fact. When you go to whatever paracord supply company's website, and you look at the picture of the color of the cord, most often, the picture of that color, that color in that picture is not going to be a true representation of what it's going to look like when you physically have it in your hand. Why is that? A lot of things. Camera angle, lighting, too big. Lighting is the biggest effect, right? And the type of camera, right? Now, I've said this, and I'll say this again. I am not a filmmaker. 
I don't have the best equipment myself. I know how to make paracord bracelets, and that's what I try to teach people. Not how to make specific weave eggs, but how to overall be better at making paracord bracelets. Make sense? Okay, now, with that said, the color thing. Because, and, and I don't have the best equipment, but no matter what I do, still works. Often, in these packages, I will receive cord. Whether it will be a, me restocking something I've running, my inventory is getting low on, or me buying a brand new color. No matter. I will pull that color out and I'll show you what the color is, I'll tell you where it is, where it got it from, that kind of thing. And I will most often compare that color with another color I have in my inventory. That way, you as the viewer can see both colors and compare them. Potentially, you have one and not the other. And that way, if you're questioning on, should I get this one, should I not get that one, what is it going to really look like when I get it? Again, my camera... It's not going to show you a true representation, but you can get a comparison between one that you may have and one that you're thinking of buying. And I'll put them side by side under the same lighting, using the same camera. You see what I'm saying? You can see, and I'll tell you, like a lot of these, some colors I'm going to show today, they, the camera makes them, will make them look more green and or more blue than they are in real life. And I'll mention that. Okay? Now, with all that said, that's one of the reasons I do this. And here's another thing. I mentioned this. A friend of mine, this bracelet right here, I've had a lot of people ask me where I found this and am I going to do a tutorial for this. Anaconda, and I did the stitching. Yes, I'm going to make a tutorial for this. Give me, you know, a week or so, I'll put it up. So, you know, if you're subscribed, make sure you click the bell icon so you get notified, and you'll be notified. If you're new here, subscribe and click the bell icon. You know what I'm saying? Um, now, with that said, let's see. A friend of mine asked me, he said, where do you come up with all these weaves? He said, I, I look on YouTube, but I, don't, I can't find any of this stuff. I say this with all respect. There are more places other than YouTube to find YouTube or find paracord tutorials. Whether it be a video tutorial or a picture tutorial, pictorial, there's places out there. And I've mentioned this before. So right now, if you're watching this and you know of some place where there's two where there's tutorials, whether it be a video or pictorials, share a link in the comment below. So we all share resources, right? It's that whole principle of it. So my viewers can learn from my stupid mistakes. I share what I've learned. You you also can share what you've learned. Share your resources. It's just like in the Facebook groups. Somebody says, where'd you get that? Some groups don't allow you to tell you, to tell others where you got it, unless it came from their shop. We won't go down that road. But if somebody says, where'd you get that? I got that from such and such. And you share a link with them. Same thing below. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Um, but I had a friend, he asked me, he said, what do you come up with all this? I said, man, there's more places than YouTube. There's blog pages. There's, um, Swiss Paracord. They're mostly dog collars, but they, you can make them into a, you know, a bracelet for a wrist. Um, Instagram. There are accounts on Instagram that have pictures of the work, and amongst that are pictorials. There are some people who have multiple accounts on Instagram. One will be their paracord work, and the other one is nothing but pictorials. See what I'm saying? But you have to search for these things. You come across them, you go, look, oh, look, there's a gold mine of, tutor of pictorials. Okay? Now, here's the one. I think a lot of people miss this. If you're on Facebook and you're in any of the numerous Paracord Facebook groups, if you go on there, and this is kind of one of the things groups allow you to do that I don't think a lot of people utilize, but it's a very useful tool if you know how to use it for sharing information. 
it doesn't matter. It's the, the layout of what it looks like on either your cell phone, mobile device, whether it's Android or Apple, or your computer, whether it's a desktop or a laptop. The, the nomenclature, where everything's laid out, might be slightly different. But for the most part, you could go on there in the, into the group, and you'll see, it'll say like, discussion, um, what's it, up? members, it's got all these different tabs, if you will, and there'll only be so many across the screen. I know on my phone, I can just tap it, hold my finger, and slide it, and that, that whole thing will slide over, and you'll see more tabs. You see what I'm saying? Well, one of those tabs says media. They've changed it. In the past, I don't know, year or so, maybe give or take, it used to say photos. Now it says media. You can click on that, and it'll take you in there, and it'll say, it'll say, um, photos, videos, albums. You can scroll through the photos, and it'll show you all the photos people put on there. Videos, it'll show you videos people have uploaded on there. Not where they've shared a link to a YouTube video, but a video that they have actually put on there. They've uploaded on, into the group, right? Okay, albums, as in photo albums. Many of you know that on your personal timeline, your personal profile on Facebook, you can create photo albums. You can do the same thing in a group. And people, some people, have went in there and they have created a photo album for a specific weaver who designs their own weaves. And it'll say, you know, John Doe's weaves. And you click on that folder, that album, and it's all two or pictorials of weaves that person has come up with. You see what I'm saying? There are places to find these things. You just have to look. Okay, now, with well, that said, I found this one in one of the photo albums of one of the Facebook groups. Or not this, no, 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 my bad, my bad, my bad. I take it back. No, I didn't. I found this one on Instagram. Guy's got a pro person, I don't know if it's a man or woman, got a profile. He's got some of his work and then some pictorials. Some work, some pictorials. Right? Okay, now, well, that's it. Um, I think that was it for, for that part. That's all I wanted to say. Um, okay, this is where I'm going to show, let's see, da, 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 da. I guess I'm going to show some of the work I've done. Like I said, I've done I've done a lot of stuff, but I've mailed some out, I've delivered some here locally and things like that, so I don't have anything, everything. But, um, I usually try to put this stuff in some sort of logical order. Let's see. I guess I'll start with this one. I'll start with this one right here. I made... I had I, I was at an event the other day, a Labor Day. I went to a barbecue and lady saw saw this and we got to talking and whatever. But it, subject came up and she asked if I could make because she had seen a picture of what well, this is a medical ID tag. Can you see it? Type 1 diabetes. She saw a picture of a keychain I had made with that on there. She said, can you make it into a bracelet? I said, yes, ma'am, I sure can. So I made her one in, what was it, acid purple and electric blue, right? And got it. I got it delivered to her, got it to her, and she said, oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. She said, my husband wants one. I'm like, okay, what colors? What size wrist and what colors? Bam. I got this one made. This is burgundy and smoke gray on a plastic burgundy buckle. Now, sharing resources. I've had a lot of people ask me where I got this, this medical ID tag. And I'll be, I'll be quite, I'll be honest with you. There are some paracord supply companies. There's Amazon. You can get some. But, in my opinion, those just look cheap. I'll say it like it is. They're tacky and they're cheap. I don't like them. I want classy looking things. I want my stuff to look professional. Not like... I don't mean this in a bad way. I don't want it to look like a little kid made it. I want it to look like 
somebody who knows what they're doing. Not that, not that kids don't know what they're doing, but you, hopefully you understand that. I don't mean that in an offensive way, but I just want, you know, I want my stuff to look good. And I've had a lot of people ask me where I got these from. Now, I bought a couple of them. I say a couple of them. I bought a handful of them a while back, and I'm about to have to order some new ones. And I went on their site, and they have since changed if I can get it back over in the light so you can see it, they have since changed what's actually written on it. I think now it says type 1 diabetes, insulin dependent. They have some other ones that just say diabetic. Um, But I got these from a, a company called StickyJ.com. I think is what it is. I'll put the link in the description below. And there's another thing. All my videos... Not just these what's in the box videos, but all my videos, the tutorial ones, any video I make, always, always look at the description. You, there, there will be links down there, and it may be something, you know, useful to you. Okay, um, but this is stickyj.com. I think is what it is. S T I C K Y J, the letter J, and that's all one word. Stickyj.com. I think is what it is. But they've got this, and they've got some other stuff. It's kind of, it's most of it is this type of material. Sticky J Medical, I think is what it's actually called, right? But this is what they've got. Okay, now, well, that said, back to the whole links in the description. I try to, if I, if I say that I'm going to put it in the description below, 99% of the time I put it in the description below, right? There are some times... When I'll just kind of mention something, and I won't specifically say I'm going to put it down there, but I do end up putting it in the description below. Why? Because I've seen videos on YouTube where they'll say, you can check the description below for the link. Okay, I pause the video and I scroll down and I look, and there's no link in the description. And it's not because they're doing it on purpose. It's because when they film the video, the time between they film it and they say that to when they actually upload it, they forget and they don't put it in the description. Right? Me, I try not to do that. How? Before I upload this video, I go back and watch it and listen to what I say. And I take notes of if I said, I'm going to put the link to this, pay them, put the link to that. And some things I just kind of mention in passing, kind of dust over them. I'm like, yeah, let's put that one in there. Let's put that one in there. So I always check the description of all my videos. There's always links down there for stuff. Okay, now, there's that. Let's see, what's next? Um, I guess I'll do this one. I, oh, goodness. Like I said, Anaconda. I made, I made, a few of these. I think last week I showed you one that was black and orange and yellow and red and whatever. But I made two this week for one of my collectors. Here's one that's this one is the core strand is blackish gray. I know it's, it's excuse me, it's hard to see but it's blackish gray. That cord is running under there. The core strand is blackish gray the main body is black. The cross pieces right here is anthracite, and then it's been stitched. Here, let's turn that around, orientate it correctly. It's been stitched in start in charcoal gray, and it's on a black silicone buckle. Oh, <coughs> people, if if you know the channel, I often talk about these silicone buckles. They're not made out of silicone. They are actually stainless steel, as opposed to some of these other metal, this is a 15 millimeter or 5 8 inch equivalent. This is a 20 millimeter, 3 quarter inch equivalent, right? But these, these quote unquote tactical buckles, that's the way I label them when I post. You can get these from uh, Amazon and stuff like that. But I'm going to tell you, they're made out of a zinc alloy, right? There's nothing wrong with it, they're still metal. But they're not as strong as these. These are made out of stainless steel. Now, they don't make them any smaller than this. 
you can only get them in this size and a one inch size, right? But they're stainless steel and they have a silicone coating on them, right? As opposed to this, it's a painted. Now, the, the coating doesn't make it any better. It's simply a stainless steel buckle, right? So when I say these silicone buckles, I'm not talking about it's made out of silicone. It's simply coated, stainless steel coated in silicone. Okay, now that's it. There's that one. Now I tell you this, these are the darkest grays that I know of. I have one that's a little bit dark. It's in that range, but it's called Stealth Gray, and I don't like it because it doesn't look like a solid color. It looks almost speckled. It's just the way it looks. Hence, I don't use it very often. But the blackish gray, the core strand, and this anthracite, those you cannot get in the States. Those are European made. I get those from Paracord EU, just like these silicone buckles. All right, that's that one. Here's another one. Same weave, anaconda, and the stitching is on me. Black silicone buckle, the core strands. Now make sure I'm going to tell you this right. Are, what is it, spinach green. The main body of the bracelet is stealth olive. That's an American cord, polyester. The cross pieces is, is green pepper, and it's stitched in holy guacamole. Now, the holy guacamole, the green pepper, and the spinach, those are all European, Paracord EU. Same place with these buckles. I didn't mention that. But I've got quite a few greens, blacks and grays, blues and reds. I'm going to do, most likely do a blue one like this in the next, in the coming week for my collector that I make a lot of this stuff for. Okay, there's that one. Um, Let's see, what's next? What's next? What's next? I made some keychains. I mentioned this in the past, in the past videos. I have, okay. I'll give you some context. Like I, I mentioned, a, a collector. I've got a few people who are collectors of paracord bracelets that, for lack of a better term, they, they have me on commission and I just make them stuff, right? So a lot of times when you see me post, I'll post it, I'll, I'll make one and I'll post it. And then, you know, the next day or later that day or whatever, you'll see me the same weave in different colors. Most of the time, those are from my collectors. I'm simply making the same weave in different color, vari color variations for those collectors. Does that make sense? Okay. Well, one of them, I've asked him in the past if he likes beads on the bracelets. No, he does not. Okay. Cool. No problem. Well, the other, I don't know, it's been about a month now. I got in a conversation with him because we talk quite often. I would I would consider him even though we have a business relationship I would consider him a friend, um, but I asked him I said well okay I know you don't like beads on bracelets I said but what about like keychains key fobs with beads, and he told me he said in fact I've got a box of beads somewhere around my house I'm like really he said if I ever found them I was going to mention it to you but you know I'm not active actively looking for them I'm like oh okay I said well if you ever come across them or whatever. I said, uh, and you want me to make you something with them? I said, either tell me, show me the bead and I'll buy it, or you can send me, you know, a bunch of them and I'll use them on some stuff. But needless to say, he likes the beads and keychains. So I ordered a bunch of beads. Hence, you know, I think it was last week or week and a half ago when I made and I showed all them beads. Well, I've been since getting beads in. You know, you can order these things from China, and it takes three, four weeks to get them. So if you order some, and you order some more, and you order some more, you start slowly getting all this stuff in. Well, I've gotten some of it in, and I've made some stuff with it. So I'll show you some of the stuff I've made. And I'll, I'll try to talk about some of the technical aspects of this. Uh, let's see. I showed you this. I think I showed this bead. I don't know about the bracelet itself. I mentioned this bead. This is one I got for myself. Most people, I mean, I, I said this, this is probably the most recognizable vampire icon there is. 
right? The big ears, the pointed nose, and you know the the big buck teeth fang looking things. Like I said, it's from 1922 silent film called Nosferatu. When this thing was made, it was only a couple of decades after the Bram Stoker's Dracula novel was written. I think that was in or 1897. And there was a whole, and the movie is so similar in plot and story to the Bram Stoker's Dracula, it was all kind of copyright stuff going on with that, right? But, and you couldn't, you couldn't find this movie in America for the longest. But eventually, you know, after Bram Stoker's death and his wife's death, the copyright owned Bram Stoker and all that. Blah, 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 blah. I don't know how it all works, but now you can see this movie in America in certain places. But it's a silent film, black and white silent film. But that has become, in my opinion, and I'm, the most iconic and recognizable vampire you'll, you'll know. You may not know what it's from or the whatever, but that's what that is, right? Okay, but I did this weave, and this we'll get to this in a second. And let's see, this is another one of the silicone. It's stainless steel, but it's coated in silicone. Twenty, what is that? Twenty millimeter day ring. And this is a fish tail with a cobra inlay. It's black, imperial red, and charcoal gray, right? And this one was done on a four-strand core. Now, that may not mean anything to some of you, but some of you will instantly go, you made a keychain on a four-strand core. And you have a bead and a two-strand diamond knot. Bingo. Now ask yourself, well, how'd you do that? <laughs> yeah, my yeah. Ask me again, cause I really don't know. I sat down and I was like, hmm, there's got to be a way to do this. <coughs> but I did, and I, and I figured it out. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing that again. Now, if you're going to do a keychain that has a four strand core weave, this is what throws you off, is because you can only put two cords through this. So what do you do with the rest of them? You have to back weave them. Well, that ain't the hardest. That's not the easiest thing to do. It's not the prettiest thing to do. I'll be honest with you. It's not the prettiest thing to do on the back side on that little thing. But the front looks pretty daggone good. And for those of you who are paracordologists and you know, you're like, yeah, that's a, that's a task right there to do that. Right? I made another one. But I only did it on a two-strand cord. Now, you still have to terminate your weaving cords back up into the back side of the bracelet. But I did it on a two-strand cord. I put this one on a brass ring to match the brass octopus bead. Right? Now, this is, what is this? Midnight blue. And the piece down the spine is midnight blue. And this is, what did I do this in? I think it's... It's colonial blue, and the, the cobra inlay part is grease blue. Grease blue being a pericord EU color, right? And this is done on a two-string core. The setup is slightly different, but you still have to back weave it. And this one turned out, it's a little neater on the back. It's not, it doesn't have as many cords you're trying to terminate on such a narrow, narrow weave. And then being a keychain. It's not the easiest thing, but it turned out okay. All right. Now the next thing, I had, I had somebody comment in one of the Facebook groups about this. They just said, "Interesting." I hope that has a destination. I don't know what they meant by that, but I'm assuming terrible color choices. You're never going to sell it. That's that's what I, I read between the lines. Maybe they meant that, maybe they're not. I don't know. But I told the person. I said, what this actually is, the bead is a Mayan priestess bead. That's the way it's labeled. And the customer, my collector, specifically wanted that. And we sat down and we talked. And I said, what colors? And I said, we both come up with, what colors did the ancient Mayan civilization use most often? And like their headdresses and this and that. And we, we dug and did some research and looked at some stuff. And that's what we come up with. Hence why these, these colors. Now this again is a fishtail cobra inlay two-strand core. 
I did it on an antique brass D-ring. There's the B. I don't know how well you can see it. I've showed this before when I first got it. But it's, it's a, it's, this is one of the more expensive beads. I mean, there's some out there that are really expensive. This one, this one's, compared to most of the ones I have, this is one of the more expensive ones. But that's what he wanted, and that's the colors the person wanted. And I said, you want them in the, orientated this way? I said, I can change up where they are. He said, no, no, leave it like that. I'm like, okay. I did a little bit of it, and they said, do it. I said, I went with it. But that Facebook group, they're like, that's interesting. I hope it's got a destination as if that's ugly and nobody's going to buy it. That's the way, what I read into that. I think they were trying to be nice about it. <laughs> but it no matter. Like I told the person, I said, that's a Mayan priestess being, I said, go do some research on the colors of the ancient Mayan civilization. I said, then, I said, it doesn't matter. This was a commissioned work. Somebody paid me beforehand basically to do this and that's what they wanted so I did it so what a lot of people understand I have a lot of people I have some I ain't gonna say a lot I have some people who they leave it's constructive criticism of a negative nature basically they don't like it I'm like well I don't care if you don't like it doesn't matter you don't, you're not the one paying for it that's what matters. You know what I'm saying? I mean, ultimately, I want it to look good and color choice and all that. But if the customer wants it, then guess what? The customer's right. I don't care what third party John Doe over here, I don't care what you think. If you don't like it, guess what? You don't have to wear it. You're not paying for it. You know, I'm trying to be nice about it, but I, I get people that say things and I'm like, do you realize that most 99% of what I post is already sold? I'm not just, I just don't make stuff or whatever, but anyway. Okay, there's that. Now, let's see. The next thing. I did this, and I had quite a few people that liked this one. I showed this one, this bead. And I made one of my collectors one of these. They're a comic book fan. I made myself one, and I was like, you want one? Yes. He said, yes, I want one like that. I'm like, okay. I figured you would. Titanium Punisher bead with black hex nuts. I had somebody ask me, did I buy them or did I paint them, the hex nuts? I said, Lowe's, about 26 cents a piece. This is a black D-ring. It's not the silicone one, it's just regular old black D-ring. But it's black and then smoked gray. That's kind of my... I didn't want to use white like the Punisher's uniform, but I did want something, you know, kind of a dirty, dingy white. You know, like he's been out doing his Punisher thing. He's been punishing the criminals, for those who know. But yeah, that's what that is. All right. Then I did the same thing, but I did this one slightly different. This is actually silicone buckle or silicone thing. Stainless steel coated in silicone. This is black anthracite to stitch the canary yellow. And it's got the hex nuts, but it's the Batman. I had I had somebody say, "Oh, I love that! I love that! You gotta make me one." I said, "Well, I said, go ahead and let you know that bead's costly." I said, "Making it's not that hard." Okay, now this one right here is an experiment. I did. I, I, I I'll tell you, this one was an experiment. Let's see. This one is just like a snake, a serpent head as a, the bead, right? Okay, for those weavers out there, yes, I did it on purpose. Snake knots. Old age snake head bead. <laughs> but this right here, DNA, or a rapture, W-R-A-P-T-U-R, -R -R, rapture weave. You can find a tutorial for it. You know, and you often see these little keychain key fobs done that way, right? But I did that. But my, here's where it gets interesting. My idea, what this is right here, you know, you, you obviously got your two pieces of 550 coming out, right? My idea was to do some whipping around it and leave the two nubs of the 550 sticking out like a fort, fort 
tongue. And I tried that, and I never could get them to do right, to shape right and all that, and it just didn't look right. So I ended up just flattening it off at the end. Right? It's not the prettiest thing, but whatever. It was a, it was a R and D, research and development, right? And I figured out how I'm going to do it. I, th I think I'd have. I haven't actually done it yet, but I think I figured out how to do it and make it look more of like a forked tongue. All right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna perfect this forked tongue effect, and then I'm gonna come back and make one for one of my collectors. He said, "Dude, I like that." I'm like, "Okay." Now, granted, I'm not probably not going to use these same colors, but yeah, there's that. Okay, now, with all that said, I I don't remember if I mentioned this in the beginning or not. I think I did. One of the bracelets I made, I made a whole bunch of them in all different color combinations. And I had a whole bunch of people, you know, share a tutorial. Well, I share a pictorial with them. Some people can't follow that pictorial. I get it. They said, why don't you make a YouTube video? Okay, so I did. Put it on YouTube. And because of that, I had quite a few subscribers, new subscribers. Like I said in the beginning, I had a, quite a few new subscribers. Thank you, thank, thank you. I will show you this bracelet. It's similar to this. I'm wearing this for a reason, because I'm going to show you something. That's what I did all these. Because that's such a, just a, once you figure out how to do this, it's not that hard. You just got to pay attention, get your mechanics right, or whatever. But let's see, the first one I made was this one. I may have shown these before. Purple. What is this? Pearl lilac, acid purple, and lilac cover in lilac on a purple buckle, right? Okay. I did another one. I don't know if I've showed this one. This is pastel yellow, goldenrod, and canary yellow. Yellow buckle. Okay, now this one. All these were made to fit my wife. Okay, now this one. Oh, what happened there? Uh, turquoise buckle. But this is, let's see, what color is this? This is mint blue, which is a Pericord EU pastel color. They label it as pastel. It's mint blue. So it has a little bit of blue, it has a little bit of green to it, right? Well, what I did is I, the underlying piece is Paracord EU labels it as dark turquoise. If you were to buy this in the States, it's a polyester cord. Paracord EU dark turquoise polyester cord. Buy it in the States, it's teal. And it's also polyester. Mentioned in this past video, I said, they're the same exact color. How do I know? Because I have both colors. I'm getting to that. And I stitched it into just regular turquoise. Now, I know on camera, because like I said, cameras don't always pick up the color variations. But this thing looks really well. I'm, I mean, it's not something that I would wear, but those colors look outstanding. See, what you're seeing on camera, it looks blue. But it's actually got more of a green look to it. Okay? Now, I'll come back to this in just a second. Made another one for my collector friend, Dark Blues. Midnight Blue. The piece down the middle, the spine piece, is Galaxy Blue. And yes, it is a different color than this, the outside edges. And then I stitched it in a, uh, what is that, Electric Blue. On a black safe light or tactical buckle. All right? Okay, that's all the stuff I've done. Now, with all that said, I'm going to make one like this. I'm going to make it these colors on this weave. Okay? I told my wife, because she liked this one. When I first made this, she said, Oh, I like that. She said, It's so intricate. Oh, my goodness. I said, okay. And I've never made her one. I've made myself a black and red and gray, and then this one. But I've never made her one. So I told her, I said, I'm going to make you one in these colors. I said, but I've got to order one of the cords. Because if you look on the sides here, there's a piece of gold running through there. 
You can use either 95 or 275, right? Well, this dark turquoise is that spine piece, which is also that color on the side. And I looked, and they do not make that dark turquoise. Paracord EU does not have it, nor do they sell it in either 95 or 275. They don't have it. So I'm like, hmm. Well, because I know that that dark turquoise is the same as the American-made teal, I bought that. But I'm going to show you. Just so you can see that. I mentioned this in the past. I'm going to show you on camera. I don't know if I've actually showed this on camera. This is dark turquoise from Paracord EU. It is a polyester cord. This is teal, also a polyester cord. Same color, two different names. That's the point. Right? Because I knew that. And I couldn't find... Because I most often order my stuff for Paracord U. Before, and I couldn't find the dark turquoise in the size cord I wanted. I wanted it in 95. I know it's the same color. So I go to the suppliers in America and I look for teal in the 95 size. Nobody sells it. But because I know this also, that most of the polyester cord is made at Atwood. Most everything, about 99% of what Atwood makes is polyester. So sometimes you can't necessarily find one of the Paracord Supply Companies that sells whatever cord that you know is polyester, go to Atwood. They will have it, which is what I did. So I ordered 95 in teal in hopes, hopefully it will be, the same color as this dark turquoise. If not, I'm going to use it. It doesn't matter. As long as it matches, if, it's got to match because they're the same color. You see what I'm saying? But I needed that size. That's what this is. The small package. So we'll open that up and let's see if it actually is going to be a match. Looks like a match to me. Again, like I said, American made polyester teal is the same color as European made dark turquoise sold by Paracord EU. Atwood, both of these ultimately came from Atwood. This came from Paracord EU. I don't know who make, who actually makes it, but they labeled two different names, but they're in fact the same color. Now, on camera, they look blue. It's actually more green, just like the bracelet. It looks blue, but it's actually more of a green look to it. But now that I have the cord, this is what I needed. I'm going to make my wife this color theme in this bracelet. And let me tell you, that one, it's not that hard. It just takes a little time. You got to pay very careful attention. This one's not that bad. This is just a fish tail. But the cobra part, you know, that's a little added. Pay attention. Well, this one, it skips that outer core strand every other wrap. So, yeah, you got to pay attention even more when you're doing this one. You see what I'm saying? So, this one takes a little time. You got to sit down. Turn off the video, Steve. Don't have the video playing while you're trying to do this one. You need to concentrate on this one so you don't mess it up. See what I'm saying? Okay, there's that. Let's get this out of the way. Okay, here's the fun part. I'm going to tell you that here's your little, little tip, little trick, whatever. Okay. I'm going to show you this. I've learned this the hard way. 
if you ever I'm gonna back out just for a minute if you ever get a package in the mail and when I say a package I mean an, an actual box and it's it looks like it's been dropped or dented do not open it first take pictures of that box take a picture of the shipping label all you know sometimes you know have two or three labels on it take a picture of all of those so it can be seen and read in that picture and then take a picture of the box from different angles and then actually the damage on that box that way when you open that box up and there's something missing from that box you have proof of an unopened box that was damaged. You see what I'm saying? There have been times in the past where this has happened to me. And I'll show you. This is what I'm going to show you. Oh my gosh, please stop. But, this is, I'm going to show you this. Okay. If we look at this. You see that? That's because this box was, has been dropped. Right? Okay. Now, I've said this. I've said this to this company before, and they obviously don't care, and they haven't changed it. But the boxes they use, if you look. They don't seal them up very well. Okay. See, this box is one of those boxes that's flat, and then they they put it together here. Let me back out. It's one of the boxes that's flat. Like you go into these pizza places here in America, and there's a flat box, and they, they fold it together, and it makes a pizza box. That's the same thing with these boxes. Right? Well, sadly... These boxes have a seam right here that's not actually connected. It's it's you can put your finger down through there, right? And normally it's no big deal. But when one of these they ship it and the shipping company drops it, crushes it, what happens is it pops that seam open. Now like I said, it's these two pieces of cardboard were never connected in the first place. So, I've said something to Pericord EU. How about you actually putting some tape over that? Why? Because small items in shipping can, if I can put it in there, then it can fall out. And that's happened. You see what I'm saying? Now I get it. You tape where you actually close the box. But why don't you why don't you put tape over that? Or like right here. Why don't you put tape over this? When I mail a box to someone, every side, every edge, every edge where these two pieces meet. Every edge has a piece of tape and every corner has a piece of tape. All the way around. Everything on it. Why? Because I don't want that to happen. Now, the boxes I use don't have these big open seams. They're not these cheap, cheap made boxes. You see what I'm saying? And that drives me nuts. But my, my point is this. If you get a package and it's, it's like this and you tell it's been dropped or smushed or crushed or whatever, take a picture of it before you open it up. That way when you open it up, there's something missing because it has fallen through the cracks, literally, no pun intended. You say, bam, there's the picture of it before it was opened. You see what I'm saying? Because I've had to deal with Paracord EU on this and some other places. But being that this is from Paracord EU, that's what I'm talking about today. First thing they, they say, I say, hey, this is what happened. It looks like 
either either the person who picked it off the shelves and put it in the box left the item out or more likely because of the way the box is put together and the fact that it was crushed in sh transported shipping that small item fell through that crack I said my suggestion is one make sure your that's driving me nuts man I can't stand my phone going off. That's why I normally have the thing on mute. Because I don't want to hear that all day. I cannot stand my phone going ding, ding, ding all day. If I didn't respond to you in five, ten minutes, you're just going to have to be patient. But does that make sense, though? The small things can fall through that crack. And I told him, I said, a couple of things. I said, first off, have your stock, the person who packages the box, pay attention and make sure they actually put the item in there. We'll get to that in a second. But have them tape around those edges, especially where that seam is that's not actually connected. These two pieces of plastic or cardboard come together. They were not actually, they, they were never connected. That's a, a wide open slit, but normally it's no problem. But when it gets crushed, it pops it open. And in shipment, things can fall out. Hence, have your people put a piece of tape over that. Over this. Put a piece of tape over that so things don't fall out. Make sense? Okay, now, with that said, that's my, my, my tip. If you get a box that's all dented like that, before you open it, start taking pictures of it. Take a picture of the label so it can be read in the picture. Take a picture of the box as a whole so showing the damage and then zoom in and take pictures of all the different areas of it. Make sense? Because, like I said, I reported that to Paracure DU and the first thing they wanted, they said, can you, can you send us pictures of the packaging? I'm like, yeah. I said, I've already opened it. I said, I had to open it to realize what was missing. I said, but I can semi put it back together and show you where it's damaged. They said, that'll work. I'm like, okay. So they get the pictures and they send them to UPS. Well, I get it. But Paracord EU, ultimately, yes, I know you can't control what UPS does and they drop the box. I said, but you can control that seam right there. You can put a big old piece of tape over that. They still have yet to start doing that as a standard practice. Okay, now, now I'm going to get off my soapbox. But that just fires me up. I notice something and I tell a company and they just don't care. But most companies are like that, you know. Okay, let's see. What have I got? I, I don't have that much. I've got some cord and some, some more of these. Where are they at? <coughs> some more of these. D rings. I tell you, I was going to start getting some in pastel colors. Like the pastel buckles. I say they're pastel. They're not really labeled pastel, but they look pastel. But the colored. I've got all the colors of the, these buckles, so I started getting the colors of these to make keychains with. Okay. Get everything out of the way. Let's see. I'll get all this out first. Okay. That's when I slid through the crack. Those are some Pike 3 550 fits. Some I bought a while back. I still haven't taken out of the packages because I haven't needed them yet. But I got that out to show the example of the crack. Okay, this simple. 5 8 inch colored buckles. Goldenrod turquoise. Right? I use these turquoise ones a lot, obviously. Here's one right here. And my wife likes that color. So I keep a lot of those. These golden rods, I've used a few of them here and there. I don't keep many of these plastic. I don't keep like a lot of these plastic buckles. I'm, I keep 10 or less of these plastic buckles of each color in stock. Because I don't use them very much. But when I get down to about 3 or 4, I usually order some more. And that's what that is. Just me ordering, re-upping re my inventory. Excuse me, I got the hiccups. Okay, let's see. Now, 
brass day rings. I ordered some. I showed this a couple while back. I ordered some of the brass ones, one brass one and one antique brass one, to see which one would go with various beads better. Right? Like this one. Here, let me zoom back in. This bead goes better with this antique brass looking. I think they call it like vintage brass is what they would label that as, right? Now this one, kind of the same thing, but it's just shinier, and it goes with this regular brass better. Well, I think last order or whenever it was, I ordered a bunch of antique brass ones. Well, this time I got some brass ones. I didn't get that many of them. I think I got like five of each because I'm I, I'm not going to use that many of the, the, these, right? But I got them just to have them. They'll go over there in my inventory. Okay, let's see. What's next? Okay. These are the D rings. They put them all in one bag. I ordered, I think I ordered like five of each of the colors I didn't have. Yellow, kind of a kind of a pastel looking yellow. They're not labeled as pastel, but they sure do look it. But that's yellow silicone, twenty millimeter. It's a stainless steel, but it's coated in silicone. Right? Okay, there's that one. What is this one? That's black, because I used quite a few of those. So I ordered some more of those. I've got, I didn't have any of these yellows, so I ordered those, right? I've, I've got some black, but I was saying, eh, go ahead and order some more. That way you don't run out. I forget what all colors are in here. I think this one's a black also. Yes, that one's a black. Here, let's just do this. What color is this one? Yeah, here we go. The other colors. This one is a purple. It's labeled as purple, but I call that pastel purple. Right? And it's almost, it's like a perfect match for this color. It's pearl lilac, almost. Right? So if you're making a keychain with that, there's your D ring to use. Oh, and I'll say this too. i say this. People, you know, if you, most often you see people make a, a keychain and they'll put it on a split ring. I don't do that. I learned the hard way. Because the little seam in that split ring, it can get turned around and get caught in these cords. And when it does, you can't get it back out and your keys are stuck on there. So the only way to get your keys off is to either cut the ring or to cut the keychain. Either way, you're no longer going to have a ring on the thing. So I don't do that anymore. I make them this way with the D ring. And you can put a split ring onto that or you can put it on a carabiner. See, a split ring. You put your keys on the split ring, the split ring on the D ring. And that seam in that split ring is not going to cut those cords or get snagged in them, snugged in them, snagged in them, whatever. Conjugate your verb. You see what I'm saying? That's why I do that. I, I posted one of these one time. It didn't have a carabiner. It didn't have any keys. It was just two D-rings. And people were like, well, what's that for? It's a key fob. Does that make sense? Okay, that's that's what these are for. Now you can use them for all kind of. You can put them on a dog collar, where you attach your leash. But that's what I use them for. You see what I'm saying? Okay, that's the purple one, and then I got these are the green ones. Again, it's called green, but I call it pastel green. But I got like I don't know. I think five of each of these different colors, right? Okay, now that's not all of them, but that's that's all of those that was in that bag. Okay, now, 
over here. I got some more buckles. And normally they don't do this this way. Normally they they put normally they'll put like this right here. Twenty millimeter brush brass buckle. Safe lock buckle, right? Normally, if you order so many, they'll put those in a bag. If you order a different, like a black one, they'll put them in a different bag. They didn't do that this time, apparently. Let's see. What are these? That's a black one. I think I got some. I don't remember. Yeah. Some navy blue ones also. I don't know how well that's showing up on camera. But it's kind of hard to tell. I can see that. I'm almost out here. Brass, brass. Brass, brass, brass. There should be five of those. Yeah, there should be five of each one of them. You can't tell the black and the navy blue until you unwrap them. But there's that. Okay. Get that out of the way. Okay. Here's some more of the D-rings. What in the world is that? Really? Okay. <laughs> it happens. I can, already, I can already tell by looking. They messed up my order. <coughs> These are... The navy blue ones, which I already had some, but one of my collectors, he likes those blues, and they make these. You can get you can get the buckle in the navy blue, and you can get this twenty millimeter D ring, which would be for a keychain. If I use some dark blue colors, right? But that's what that is. Get that out of the way. And this should be all. I don't know how many of these I ordered. Where's my inventory? Yeah. Right. Okay, yeah. Ten of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. That's all of those. I'll have to go through all this in a second. Okay. There's one thing I could tell by looking that they messed up. It says right here on my invoice, maroon, that's this color, maroon silicone 20 by 4 millimeter stainless steel D-ring. Have you seen those yet? No. What did I get? I got a navy blue O-ring. Now my question is this. That comes from someone not paying attention to what they're doing. Hey, mistakes happen. I get it. But how do you make that mistake? <laughs> I mean, think about it for a second. I ordered maroon d ring I can see if it was, if they gave me a maroon O-ring. Hey, honest mistake. Or if they gave me a D-ring in the wrong color. But they got both the color and the item wrong. Hence, somebody wasn't paying attention to what they were doing. And the thing is, nowhere in this order did I order O-rings. You see what I'm saying? But it's no big deal because these things, they don't, these didn't cost that much. Or I should say the maroon ones. The maroon D-rings, if I'm not mistaken, the maroon ones and the navy blue ones are cheaper than the rest of them. Why, I don't know, but they are. 
So I didn't pay. I only ordered five of the maroon ones. Let me make sure I'm going to tell you that right. Yeah, maroon silicone 20 by 40 by 4 millimeter stainless steel D-ring. Quantity, five. They don't cost that much. So I'm not worried about it. I'll use these. I just think it's funny. How do you... I could see if it was a maroon O-ring. Okay, you you grabbed you grabbed it out of the wrong box, no problem. Or if you grabbed a D ring, but it was the it was the wrong color. You see what I'm saying? But you got the color and the item wrong. You weren't paying attention. Now I'm gonna assume they're all. Yeah, they are. Okay, that's all of that. That's all of the hardware. Okay, now to the colors. This is what everybody wants to see. Woo, the colors. 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 Co colors. I am a nightmare walking. Psychopath stalking. King of the jungle. Just a, I don't know, iced tea. Colors. Y'all know this song. From way back in the day. Okay, let's see. Ah, uh, Colonial Blue. Colonial Blue. This is a restock. I'm, about, I'm getting close to running out, so I figured I'd order. That is what this is, right? That feels awfully like polyester. Is it polyester? Didn't tell you on the on the uh, what do you call it? This thing feels polyester. It doesn't matter. I used it. It's not that bad. I mean, I don't care if it is polyester. I'm going to use it, but it does feel like it. Maybe I need to check to see. Okay, there's that. Uh, this is a re up. This is, oh, let me compare this to something else. What's some colors you got? You know, um, electric blue, midnight blue, I've got a royal blue. Where's it at? Oh, there it is, right there. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? This is colonial blue. This is electric blue. This is midnight blue. And this is royal blue. Now these two are very similar. This was a little bit darker, a little bit more vibrant, hence electric blue. But there you go. You can see, like I say, you can see. So if you're wondering what one of them is going to look like, you have this one, but you've been thinking about ordering that one or this one. There you go. Electric blue, midnight blue, royal blue, colonial blue. And that's just, I mean, even though I got this for Paracord EU, it's the same color as. American made colonial blue. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah, there you go. Comparison, color comparison. That's what I'm talking about. I'll compare these colors. That way you can see what they are. Under the same camera and the same lighting. Okay, there's that. Now, I'll throw this one out there. Uh, let's see. These are also sort of blue colors, so I'm going to bring them over here too. This one is polar blue. And I've got this. I ordered this in... 550, and I, I've already got it in micro cord, right? So I went ahead and decided to get it in 95 or type 1. Makes sense. Go again, do you see? Polar blue, electric blue, midnight blue, royal blue, colonial blue. Like I said, I got quite a few blues. But I've said this in the past. If I order it in one size, I will try to get it. If they make it in other sizes, micro, 95, and 550, that's the three I work with the most. I'll try to get that one color in all three of those sizes. Now, I may not order them all three at once at one time, but I'll order that, and then, you know, the next time I may order the micro and the 550. You see what I'm saying? But eventually, I'm going to get it 
you know, through to those. Why? For things like this. I need a piece of gold, 550, and the side is either 95 or 275. And I don't use 275 for anything but that specific, the way I've done that. There's a couple of other ways where I would use 275 if I have it, but I can use 95. See what I'm saying? There you go. Okay. And then this one is, this is pastel blue. I've got this in, got it in 550, and there's the micro, but there's the 95 of the type 1, right? Like I said, if I give you the wood size, so I'm getting sleepy, folks. If I get it in one size, I'm going to get it in the other two. 550, 95, and micro. Okay. There's that. Okay. Now, this one right here, this is just a real. This is moss green. Here, let me put all these up so they don't roll off the table. Actually, let's get the micro cord out of the way. I put this over here back in my holder. Get this over here. Get this over here. Yeah, I got a mess on my desk. I have to clean this up. Like what? My desk is always a mess. <laughs> it's a constant. It's controlled chaos. But moss, right? Now you're about to run out, and when I start getting low, I'll go ahead and order some more. And they've been out. This has been out of stock from Paracord EU, and you know since I'm. I'm you know, I've just gotten used to ordering stuff from them. So, if I'm going to order, I might as well make it worth my while and order it all because the shipping cost. But, <coughs> they've been out of, this has been out of stock for a while. Now, I got an email the other day saying, hey, product back in stock. Bam, let me get some before I run out. Right? And it is. To be honest with you, the color's not exactly the same. I don't know how well you can see that on camera. But this one is a little bit darker. But you can always chalk that up to, well, granted, one's made in Europe, one's made in America. But you see that, I, I, you see this, say you order some color, color X. You run out three, four months, it don't matter. And you re up and you order it, but you still got a little bit of it left. And you get the you get the new batch into your inventory, and you look at it, and you're like, "I ordered it. That's the same color, but they're not actually the same color." It's got to do with the dyeing process. Now I'm not I don't know what all the technical details, but I know when they dye the cord, they they make however much at one time, ten thousand feet. I don't know, and they dye it. Well, the next time they go to make that color cord and they go to dye the cord, they may not have the dye mixture exactly the same as the last time. See what I'm saying? Now, for the most part, it's going to look the same, but there are slight variations. Now, like I said, I don't know how well you can see that on camera. I can see it, but, you know, I've been dealing with color for more than 30 years of my life, so that's darker than that one. But not bad. I mean, it's not bad. It's not a. It's not a huge difference. So I don't worry about it. <sighs> okay, there's that. That's it. I got one more color, and this one. It's very similar. This is American-made. Nylon fuchsia, right? Now, what I actually wanted, <coughs> I've had this. What I wanted was magenta, which is similar to this. Now, Pericord EU, they didn't have it. I want to say they had... I think it was micro cord I was looking at, or I don't remember what size cord it was. But they they have it, but they're simply it's out of stock. 
And I start looking and back to the whole I want the same color in all the sizes. Well, I started looking and I realized Paracord EU does not have, I think it's what it was, they didn't have magenta in all the sizes. So I'm like, okay, what's a similar color that they do have in all the sizes? Passion Pink. Wow. Those look similar to my naked eye. That right there, that one looks red, honestly. And this one looks purple. To on camera. That looks red on camera and that looks purple. But they're actually very similar, but this one is darker. This one looks more like a dark pink, and this one does. In, to my naked eye, it does have a little bit of a purple tint to it. But that's Passion Pink is what that's named. And I was looking for something that was a magenta type color. That's what this is supposed to be. It's the closest thing that I could find in their color, whatever. And I got it in <laughs> micro. I went ahead and bought it in all three sizes. Micro and... 550. Now, I'll show you one of the things. Something I wanted to do. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do, but by gosh, I'm going to do it. I do make stretchy bracelets. These are Agate, magenta. Looks like a pretty good match to me. These are Howlite pink. H-O-W-L-I-T-E. Which is, if I'm not mistaken, I think that's like a synthetic. When they say Howlite, what that actually is, is it's a synthetic type bead. And that's kind of a pinkish magenta the darker part of it it's not purple it's not gray either it's almost like a very dark purpley gray but that looks like a pretty good match that's what I was trying to do is match these beads now these these beads are beautiful these things just I mean it's not I say this is a beautiful color not really I'm gonna not that I'm gonna wear it, but it's a beautiful color. Magenta, passion paint, very similar. But these magenta tiger eye. Now granted the darker part of that tiger eye doesn't match, but the lighter part it matches that cord very well. That's what I was doing. That's why I got all three of them. I wanted to be able to match these beads. Now, how I'm going to use this, I don't know. There's a bracelet. Oh, I don't know where it's at. My wife may have it on today. I made a, a sanctified. I'll show you this. This is what I did. I did it in these in turquoise type colors, right? Sanctified. I've got a color here, a color here, and then I stitched it. And it's done in turquoise and actually it's dark turquoise, regular turquoise, and then I stitched it in like rose pink, right? And I come back and I, I sewed onto it or stitched onto it some little tiny turquoise beads about six or seven of them right there in the center right there and those little beads the hole in that bead is a one millimeter hole that's standard when you buy these beads like this standard has got a one millimeter hole 
Sometimes you can find them with a two millimeter hole. Either way, I have a, a rotary tool or a bead reamer, if you know what I'm talking about. It's got a blade on the end of it, and it's got diamond. It's diamond coated. And you can stick it in that hole and ream it out, and to make it bigger, right? Well, that's what I did. I took these. I think there were six millimeter turquoise beads with a one millimeter hole, and I thought. <laughs> I thought, since I got all the turquoise, the turquoise was the bracelet color, I said, I'll just use the turquoise wherever it's at. Turquoise micro cord, which is just under two millimeters. I said, I'll use that to stitch it or sew those beads onto the bracelet. Here's the problem I ran into. You know how when you cut you cut the end of it, you have to melt it to get a little hard lump on there to stick it in the back of your needle, right? Well, in order to you do that, no problem. But this this needle won't go through the hole in the bead, nor will that lump of plastic big enough to fit in that needle, neither will it go through the hole in the bead. And I even reamed out those holes and made them bigger. So what it come down to is, I'd cut the end of it off, and just barely, barely singe it so it wouldn't fray. I would thread it through the bead. Once I got it through the bead, I would heat it up again, reshape it to fit on that needle, and then I'd stitch it through the bracelet. When I got to the next bead, I'd cut it again, and I had to. Finish. And it was a back and forth. I kept having to reshape the end of that cord, and that was very tedious. Somebody said you should have did the thing all the way around the bracelet. I said yes, I know, but this is what I had to do. I see it was tedious, and I got tired of doing it, so I only did the center part of that bracelet. Um. Check out my Instagram. Hey, my my Instagram account link is down below. Go go check that out. You'll see the you'll see the bracelet. It's a turquoise color looking. What I do with that? It's kind of this color, this dark turquoise looking color or teal, whatever you want to call it. But that's the color, and then it's got little tiny beads on it. But it was I did that, and I thought, man, this is a pain in my mm mm mm. But anyway, anyway, I know I, this video has been a little bit longer than my normal videos, but that's okay. I actually had some colors to show today. I always got some new colors to add to my inventory. Now I got to order what else? I, I forget what some other colors. I'm gonna I'm gonna get some more of the pastel type colors. Pastel blue. This is not they don't consider this a pastel color, but it is to me. It's polar blue, but it's so. It's so light and tinted that it's, I consider it a pastel. But I'm going to get some more of these pastel colors and, yeah. But that's what I got this week. I mean, that's a whole bunch of stuff. But like I say, you know, appreciate all the new subscribers. Um, if you've got any... Here, let's back out. You can see the chaos on my desk now. <laughs> it looks like a train wreck, right? But uh, if you got any suggestions or there's any kind of a certain wave you want me to do a tutorial on, I can't promise. But put a comment below. If there's certain colors you want to see on me comparing with other colors, like I did the blue, I had all them blues, um, let me know. Put a comment below. If I have it, I'll, I'll definitely do it. If I don't have it, I may order it just for that purpose. Can't promise you, though. But, you know, there you go. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. But, as always, I'm going to end this one like I end them all. Keep it neat. Keep it clean. Keep it tight. Happy weaving, folks.